Hi, my name is Adriana, also known as Black Girl Writing, and on this channel, we are on the journey to becoming published. So hello, you all. Today, we are going to be going over the feedback from my alpha reader. Um, if you guys don't know, which you should know, because I put in a video on it, I'm now working with the alpha reader. So I got my feedback over the lie. I got my feedback back last Friday for my first three chapters so I'm gonna go over the two chapters the first um, first chapter for each of my characters um, I'm just gonna read the suggestions that she made and then me kind of like responding and going through those questions I've already like gone through it and read it but I'm like let me just do another like read and take so I can fully understand the corrections because she gave me some really nice corrections with examples which is why i really love working with her alpha reader i'm working with now so update on my schedule with that i'm now deciding that i'm going to send her the full manuscript at the end of september so i think september 30th or september 31st right september 30th yeah yeah <laughs> september 30th um because doing the doing the submissions every friday was kind of a lot only because i have to work overtime at work now and i was like okay i gotta prioritize i would love to spend my time writing and all that shit but i really can't and writing don't pay the bills my job does so my job has to come first so she's just my operator who i work with she's just so understanding she's like whatever works um just let me know obviously we finished the full subscription because i have my feedback back and she's had her payment so she's like whenever you're ready just hit me up and we'll come up with a new game plan she's like i really enjoy working with you i'm like uh, i enjoy working with you too what are you doing bro okay anyway you gonna sit sit down yep. sit are you really you can be on the other side oh you make me so uncomfortable dude you're so weird okay Anyway, you're gonna be in the video of me? Right, just don't knock down my shit, okay? Go through my corrections with you guys right here, and we'll just get started before, before I don't know, all hell breaks loose. I don't know, and before I lose light, like, I don't got that much light. Maybe I can just put my screen up a little bit. Nala, if you're gonna be looking to all hell, I'm gonna need you to go in the other room. Uh, how do I? There we go. It's greetings, Ariana. So I'm sending over these first three chapters with my suggestions and critiques. I think this is an amazing start. I love the introduction. The script is engaging, curious, and enjoyable. Um, I had some questions. Um, looking forward to making edits. So what I did, I think I might have told you guys. So for stuff that I didn't know, I just put brackets like add this here. Maybe change this. Maybe add this. So so she was like do you want to make more changes with that i'm like yeah that was just because it's the first like zero draft and i just needed to put shit there so i will remember what i was thinking of in the moment when i couldn't actually write something so yeah so anyway we're gonna go to chapter one which is Roz's chapter so the breakdown of this chapter is Roz is going with his friends enzo to the underground demented bunker where he is trying to like you know he's trying to join the the secret organization so that's that's the gist of it so the first correction she gave which was something that i is it this one or is it the second one she gave me a lot of good corrections and the best part about it she gave me examples because with me i found i was struggling to like structure the flow of the sentence so it it went on continuously it wasn't all stagnant so I kind of struggled with that and she pointed that out and I'm going to read it in a correction but she also gave me examples of how to make it flow more easily for the reader I was like my girl that's what I'm talking about that's how alpha reader is supposed to do um so she said the first thing that stood out to me surrounding the story was the aspect that makes this fantasy the extraordinary people with magic powers who are unlike anyone else um you call these individuals manifestors in your work so why did you choose this particular name and why do you refer to Roz as informing to enzo as okay yeah so with that one because that's a so I, okay so I, I have it like this so it's like you know the little document in microsoft and um 
her correction is what she has highlighted so with that and i talked to her about it i was like you guys know where i got the term manifesto from or what would you stop licking my armpit dude just sit there and look pretty you're great at that anyway <laughs> um so i know where my term manifestors came from these are people who through who can manifest magic through their emotions but I wanted that to be kind of found out later, like how these people get their magic, like in the things that have been done to them and, and, and finding out the, the when and the why. So that had me thinking like, yeah, why are they called manifestors? I just, cause I'm just calling them manifestors. I'm thinking maybe I should introduce how they got their magic before. Cause, because then I was thinking if these people already know, like in my world, if they already know how they have their magic and then maybe that can be that could open a different door to different like ostracization that's that right ostracization because they would have already had that knowledge so these people have magic because oh, my nails look so cute sorry so these people have these magic because of this reason so and you guys know i'm connecting that with the emotions and it being unstable the more unstable the emotions the more powerful the magic it's great like that makes sense to me and it makes sense but i didn't know if i should put it in the beginning but now since she get that question like you know why do you call them that like um is there a particular reason and when you start offering this i mean you're gonna be like oh why are they called um manifestors instead of like i don't know regular people who just use fucking magic um yeah so that kind of had me thinking maybe i should just introduce it or or have some knowledge spit about manifestors a little bit earlier in the book instead of later when solomon and all of them get it and my other other side important characters that construct this series come to life so that was the first thing then the second correction was doo -doo 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 -doo. here we go yeah about the um staying in the present the story the story is in the first person and to maintain this integrity i noticed a consistency in attempting to write in the present still there are times when the writing is not present or the script is challenging slash uncomfortable to engage as a reader example um where are we going Roz, my friend enzo called behind me so that's what i wrote so then she put a suggestion so Roz, where are we going i could hear enzo's feet dragging while my eyes continued to scan the broken glass and dilapidated building that sounds so good don't it like cop in that cop in that so i was like okay i get it it's adding more detail his friend's dragging his feet he don't know what's going on Roz is focused dead ahead on finding the bunker so yeah i i just feel like it just it adds a little je ne sais quoi i don't know it just it was just something about the different phrasing so then the third correction was um doo -doo 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 okay so t yeah so another example was taking the thought and keeping it present while acknowledging the additional characters and without telling the readers that enzo is Roz's friend but letting the writer show that enzo is his friend eventually so an example was some things are starting to look familiar with i think that's what i wrote okay yeah so what i wrote was ross was saying some things are starting to look familiar i say to myself hoping that the building we passed with the three diagonal broken windows was not a fluke of my imagination given that nearly all of the de uh, the deserted buildings on the fourth street have broken windows and doors and blah 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 so the alternate approach was that would be that she suggested where things are beginning to look familiar the trio of shadow windows appeared to be the sign i was hoping for but almost every house on the fourth street has shattered windows or busted doors and perhaps i was wrong so i i, I kind of like that better I, there's some i'm there's some stuff i'm like oh i will also add to that but I like how he's trying to find this place that like he don't know where it is. It's supposed to have like three di And you know what? I was <laughs> looking on Pinterest trying to describe this building that Roz and Enzo were going to. And the building had three broken like diagonal windows. It was like some old like dilapidated building. So that's what I was trying to describe. <laughs> and I was like, did I even describe that right? So even the way she kind of described the building that I already had, it just feels like it's a little bit more detailed. And it gives 
you an idea of where they're at so in my world like when you're closer to the end of the city you're in the good part when you go to the outskirts when you are like on fourth third first street I'm, I'm doing streets over here we go up to 30th and that's where all the nice people and all the stuff be at but when you go back out to like past 10th street no i say past 15th street it get a little dicey so i'm also trying to have these different streets different diff different districts thing going on so um that's something i'm also going to add more into that um do 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 and then um example for a showing uh, she said to show not tell example so what i said was i can feel my pulse quicken as my anger rises and so the alternate approach was what um my alpha reader suggested was my pulse quickens as enzo's as enzo's lines of questions becomes more and more irritating and before that you know enzo was like well why do you want to do this like this don't make no sense like blah 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 um and I just feel like that's more showing, not telling. It's kind of heightening it. And I like the way she said that. And I'm definitely keeping all of her. I'm keeping all of her suggestions. Because I feel like I am a very tell, tell writer and not showing. No, wait. Yeah. You want to show, not tell. Yeah. So I'm a very tell, tell, tell writer instead of wording it where it's like showing it more and I talked to my alpha reader about that I'm like if you see anything where you can like tweak it and add it and make it more je ne sais quoi do that and she did that she did not disappoint so then I think I have two more corrections yes okay so I have one more correction for Roz's chapter um and then the last one it was again another show not till with an alternative approach because that's what i was kind of focusing on now just kind of getting everything out there um the example was um okay so please don't tell me you took c bro enzo made eye contact and i didn't dare look okay no that's what she said oh fuck never mind okay so what i said at the top was Wait, what? You succeed, Roz. It wasn't by choice. I informed him, refusing to meet his gaze. Enzo is aware that my relationship with my uncle is tumultuous, tumultuous at its best. So that's what I put as Roz explaining the situation where it's uncle forced him to take this drug and he wasn't able to do it. It was whole blase, blase. So then the alternate approach to that was, please don't tell me from, this is Enzo telling Roz. So please don't tell me you took seed, bro. Enzo made eye contact and I didn't dare look his way. I wish it were by choice. My hands began my hands began to blur looking down at them. So I like that. Kind of getting a little teary eyed and like I like that. I like that. Get it get it in Roz's little emotions. Help me get that out. Um, because it is a very upsetting thing for him, but I didn't know how to say, oh, I feel the tears coming out, and then they're just you know, I'm just trying to word it a little bit better. Right, Nala? right right um and so those are some of the just suggestions um and then she did a few more for a few examples that i uh a few examples that i gave for the show and not tell um which the, were the majority just phrasing and then she highlighted things where i was going from present to like past want to be present or past what the fuck is this kind of present she's like i see what you're doing here's how you should really word it so it stays consistent so she gave me some of those for chapter one and that was great um those are really all the corrections like the entire the chapter as a whole in its entirety i feel was was strong it was just getting that wording and that the the flow of the chapter and then again the flow of the book the cadence of my characters i'm trying to get that so that's that's what's going on so next we're gonna hop into chapter two which is fonta's first chapter in this chapter a little um preview not preview but like a little um info about this chapter so um fonta is in the middle of getting secret services done not, not like secret services but she is seeking the madame's help to find information on the politician who she feels is a has a connection to her dad's disappearance and now she goes to the madame because okay we all know men love they women 
and you know you can you can hire them for services so i'm like what better way than to get a madame in here have her girls doing some secret services and then you know that's kind of where ponce is kind of going to go into debt because it's like oh i thought it was only 500 gold royal coins and she's like oh no sis that's the down payment so the madame kind of like kind of guilt her into it like don't you want to pay for the full service it's like don't you know like i can get the information about your dad that nobody else can get from this man if you hire my services so we all and we we know she ends up doing that and then she kind of goes into that and all that stuff but anyway so here are the corrections for chapter two hopefully that made sense a little bit um starting off with again what i noticed most about chapter two was I would have had and I would have enjoyed more showing than telling the example was when Fanta was describing the madame herself when she's in her quarters with her and she's like sitting across in this little like half broken stool with a splinter like all in her butt and stuff and she's just like I'm just trying to get this deal done and you know go back home because I start off the chapter with I've never snuck away from home before but I guess it's always a first time for everything so we already know she ain't supposed to be doing this so she's like I'm just trying to get gone get my information pay you and leave so the example that I wrote when describing the madame was with broad shoulders and an even larger personality as she sits cross-legged on the other side of her not so large quarters she sits flanked by two men whom i presume are her bodyguards if not her own personal service workers so that's what i wrote so she had an alternate approach to that phrasing was sitting in a small quarters flanked by two men who appear to be bodyguards i'm frightened by madame's penetrating voice sharp stare broad shoulders and crossed legs i was like okay i fuck with that i fuck with that because i do want her to be intimidating i'm when i'm writing fanta i'm trying to write her as a little bit of gullible naive sweet girl wants to do the right thing um she just doesn't think before she does things so i'm trying to write it like that i want her to be low-key kind of sheltered and then like she's kind of she's doing things out of her comfort zone so she needs to be like i don't know what the hell is going on like i'm over here freaking out so that's how i'm trying to write her and then writing Roz is like a little angsty angry little teenager because you know life's not fair but he wants to prove himself um to a group of people that he wants to belong to so if that all makes sense so yeah those are some of the suggestions for actually for this for this chapter i only had that one really like it okay it's a really long like suggestion but that was the only like correction i had for that chapter um the showing not telling um to highlight the difference in delivery of the same message one reads an outsider describing a scene so the first one which was one i had was it sounded like an outsider was describing the scene and then the alternate one which was her suggestion um reads as the character in the scene experiencing it, it firsthand and giving the reader a glimpse through their eyes which is what i'm trying to do so so we get in there we get in there and then um she said the pace of this chapter is enjoyable i enjoyed the shocking I enjoyed the shocking portion leading to the end when oh yeah when my dad could uh, get inside yeah uh-huh uh-huh yeah <laughs> so I have like this little blood contract thing that Fonta gets into because one of the guys is a manifester and how the madame has her contracts is you know you sign with your blood not only because it's creepy but also the manifester will be able to track her anywhere in the city because you know he kind of like licked her blood and all that shit it was kind of gross she was like oh my god he just licked my hand and like oh just it was a little indulgent and it was a little too much but i wanted to be creepy and she seemed to enjoy it she said that was juicy and exciting to read there was a nice tension to the scene with fonta and the madame as well very nice so cool so i'm getting there i'm getting there y'all done filmed abriana here but one of my corrections or suggestions i'll say it's a correction because i i like being corrected and you know when I need improvement was um, one of the suggestions from my alpha reader was to create a mock persona for every character if I haven't already um, to build them up like you guys know I have you know my 
I have a Pinterest board. I have my characters from my happy planner that I look at. But she even suggested like um, finding video voice clips that you feel would match. I was like, oh, damn. Okay. Because I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just, mm, mm. because when my book is finished, I'm gonna, it's going to be an audiobook and it's going to be read by Joni's Abbott Pratt because I absolutely love every audiobook she does. She murders. So she's going to be my um, reader for when my book is, you know, on Audible. So everybody get my book on Audible because it's going to be on Audible and she's going to be reading it and I've already put that out there. So yeah, that's also something I wanted to add in here as one of the corrections that I got. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really have enjoyed my experience with having the alpha reader who I have um, right now. And then maybe one day I'll do another more in-depth video. Um, I'm still going to be working with her. But as I said before, I am changing my schedule. So now I'm just going to be sending her the co a complete finished draft by the end of September. Where she will have the entirety of October to look look over it. Give me my correction backs. And then for NaNoWriMo, that can be my main focus. Um, yeah, because, you know, life and work and I got to pay bills. And I was like, yeah, this Friday, this three chapters every Friday ain't working, especially if I got to start doing overtime and shit. So I was like, yeah, maybe I'm not going to prioritize because uh, this don't pay the bills. Not yet. It don't pay the bills yet. So I got to do what I got to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Share if you care. And I'll be back with another video real soon.